Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at our second property, the translation property of the Laplace transform. We've already been dealing with this quite a bit in the previous videos, but it's nice to just point it out so we all realize what it is. So we realize that the function in the frequency domain is simply the Laplace transform of the function in the time domain. But then we can say that the Laplace transform of e to the at times the function of the time domain is simply the function of the frequency domain of s minus a. Notice when this is a positive a, then we subtract the a from s. If this is a negative a, then we add the a, then it becomes f of s plus a. Well, then we also realize that if we take the inverse transform, the inverse Laplace transform of f of s minus a, then this would then become e to the at times the inverse Laplace transform of the function of s, not s minus a, which then becomes e to the at times the function in the time domain. So notice all what happens is if we multiply the function in the time domain by e to the at or e to the minus at, then when we take the Laplace transform, we get the transformation of s minus a if it's positive at and s plus a if it's negative at. Let's do an example and see what we get. Here we have the inverse Laplace transform of 5 divided by s plus 2 squared plus 5 squared. That looks familiar. Let's say here, we know that the, if we have the sine of omega t in the time domain and we transform that into the frequency domain, this would look like this. This would be equal to omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. But notice we don't have an s squared here, we have an s plus 2. Hmm. That means we're going to need some sort of factor e to the at, but since it's plus 2, it'll be e to the minus at. In other words, if we have something that looks like this, e to the minus at times the sine of omega t, what that does is if I transfer that into the frequency domain using the Laplace transform, e to the minus at simply means that I'm going to take s plus a. So this becomes omega divided by s plus a quantity squared plus omega squared. So that's the only difference we get when we add this additional term. Well, we're not really adding it, we're multiplying it, of course. So when I look at that and I look at this, I can then see that there's a lot of familiarity between those two which means then that the inverse Laplace transform of 5 divided by s plus 2 quantity squared plus 5 squared cannot be written as e to the minus, this is your a here, that would be minus 2t multiplied times the La inverse Laplace transform if you didn't have a plus 2 here, and that would then be the sine of omega t, in this case omega is 5, so we write the sine of 5t. And this is the inverse Laplace transform of this function. Notice that we use the translation property by realizing that the s plus 2 simply means that we have to add an e to the minus 2t term, or at least multiply it by an e to the minus 2t term, in order to get the proper answer. And that's what we mean by the translation property of the Laplace transform.